All right, so today we're gonna have some fun with some black lights and some snakes. And as a matter of fact, a black light is a useful piece of equipment when you're keeping snakes, especially ball pythons, and especially if you make a white snake. Uh, for example, if you make like an ivory or a super bamboo, this is actually a bamboo around my neck here, this is Bobby. If you actually breed two of these together, you can get an all white snake with blue eyes, a super bamboo. And the problem is, is with white snakes, especially you can actually have other genes in the mix and the white snake basically just masks out all the other genes you really can't tell that the other genes are in there unless you have a black light and sometimes you can shine a black light on your white snakes and you can actually see the patterns of the hidden genes that are in that white snake it's kind of interesting and as a matter of fact if you look on the internet there's a lot of people that actually try to do that technique and maybe show it off in their YouTube video and and a lot of people that I see are actually using the wrong spectrum of the black light. As a matter of fact, not all black lights are the same. Uh, there's, there's different spectrums. As a matter of fact, the very first one I got was in the range of 395 to 400 nanometers. And that's pretty much the wrong spectrum for black light. I actually did a video a few months ago on that and I really wasn't that impressed with the black light. And I decided to kind of look into it a little bit more and come to find out I'm actually using the wrong wavelength of black light. And if you use a wavelength that's up close to 400, essentially what happens is you're kind of tapping into the visible wavelength of the blue spectrum of light. So you, you kind of see a little bit popping out under, underneath with the, with the black light, but you have so much blue light on top of that that it's kind of masking out the, the dramatic effect of the black light in the snakes. So what you're, actually, what you're actually supposed to use is you should use a 365 nanometer spectrum. And the, the, the thing with black lights is, especially if you're using 365, it can be pretty hazardous to look at that black light for a long time so if you look if you go to a party and they have black lights really what you should be wearing is the yellow uh, UV protecting goggles to keep you from looking at that light for a long time you can look at it for a short amount of time but you really shouldn't look at that light for an extended period of time and I'm gonna shine some some black lights on some snakes today and let me tell you it, it, it definitely won't transfer the harmful rays through the camera to your YouTube screen you definitely won't see you won't have to wear any kind of goggles to actually watch this video you're 100% completely safe so what I'm gonna do is I know uh, pretty much my albinos were the most impressive on my last video I want to pull those out first and I want to show you with regular light and then I want to show you with uh, the the kind of the high-end spectrum so I actually have two lights here I have this one that I bought originally this is the 395 to 400 nanometers kind of a floodlight and then this other one I just kind of wanted to play around with it I actually bought just a little kind of a, one of the torch lights with a little clicker on the back and this is going to be the light that is pretty impressive as a matter of fact I was walking around the house with this and it's amazing what you can actually see just kind of popping out this looks at everything in it's 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 pretty amazing the difference between these two two lights. As a matter of fact, if you're into scorpions, scorpions can really reflect the UV light like a black light. You can take this little light here and go scorpion hunting and the scorpions apparently just kind of pop out because they really glow under this light. So we're going to use these lights to check out some snakes. All right, so take a look at this snake. This is my albino, 100% head pied. And the funny thing is about this girl is she actually looks like there's two different uh, types of yellow through the snake. It is really interesting under the black light, and I haven't actually looked under the new black light. It'll be kind of interesting. But this is what it looks like just under regular light. It's kind of interesting that this, this snake is looks pretty much like a normal ball python just a straight albino and I want to turn off some of these lights and I want to show you what this looks like under the first black light that I actually have and that is actually the 395 to 400 nanometers and take a look at that that is kind of crazy right there that is a crazy looking snake but I really want to look at this snake under 365 nanometers. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So take a look at that. It looks completely 
completely different. It's this. This really doesn't have a whole lot of coverage. <laughs> it would almost be better as a floodlight instead of just kind of a hand spotlight. But that is really crazy. All the yellows kind of coming out in that snake. It is really wild looking. That is <laughs> that is pretty crazy. And look at the head on this thing. It's really interesting how the, the, the yellows and everything are coming out on the head of this snake. It's really kind of interesting. It's interesting it has these dark patches and then these yellow patches right in here. A lot of yellow and then the dark on top of it. So it's kind of unexpected, especially if you compare it to this. It is a lot more dramatic, I would say, this way. It's a lot more intense. Not quite as blue, which is interesting if you kind of go back and forth. This one kind of, it looks kind of impressive, but it doesn't look quite as impressive as the 365. This is the 365 nanometer here. So that is pretty impressive. I want to actually show you my other albino, which is, it should look a little bit different than this. I don't think my other albino actually has these yellow highlights through the body, but it'll be interesting to see the difference between my two albinos. All right, so here's my other albino. Definitely a completely different strain of albino. This one is a really high contrast. And this girl, look at how big she is. She's a really big girl. Actually, I bred her, I bred them both last year and they laid eggs. And this, actually this year I gave them the year off. So they've been just kind of hanging out here in a couple months. I'm hoping to actually breed these two girls. So take a look at this. This is visible light and then we'll switch over Take a look at that, that is really crazy. And that is the 395 to 400 nanometers. You can see there's definitely quite a bit of blue light still in there. It's just really kind of popping out the blue colors of the snake. So let's take a look at just the 365 nanometers. Both are really impressive. You can actually see a little bit more kind of popping out right there, I think. And a little bit of yellows just kind of popping out here and there. If you kind of go back and forth between the two, I would say, I'd say that 365 is probably a little bit more impressive as, as far as the light. I wish this had a little more intensity and a little more coverage. That's kind of what I was wishing instead of just a pen light. I just kind of bought this to play around to see if it would actually work and if there is actually a difference between the two. And it definitely looks like there is quite a bit of difference between these two lights. So if you're wondering what Bobby looks like under the black light, I'm wondering the same thing. As a matter of fact, last time it wasn't that impressive, but I want to really see the difference between these two lights. So this is visible light here, and let's take a look. If we take these off and look at the 395 to 400 nanometers, not really that impressive compared to the albinos. You can see it's kind of interesting but not very impressive so let's take a look at this other one this is kind of more really interesting actually let me see if i can actually bring them up to the camera a little bit more under this light this is kind of interesting take a look at the colors and the patterns under this light it's I'd say it's it's a little bit different than looking under a regular light, but not really that impressive compared to the albinos. Bobby's not really that different under a black light. Since the albinos have been working so well, I decided to show you my albino pied male. And this is this is the one that I bred to quite a few snakes last year. I got all the double heads from this guy. He's been fasting for a while. Just went back on food, finally. I'm not sure, well, you, it's kind of interesting because males, you can actually pair them up even if they're fasting and a little bit underweight from the fast to the next year. But now he's decided to run, which is not good. I don't want him to run. I want him to look at him under this light. So that is, that is under the visible light. And then let's take a look at him under, this is 395 to 400, which is not quite that impressive. So let's take a look at 365. Take a look at that. That is pretty, 
pretty impressive. Look at the pattern and the color on this in the middle part here. Let me see if I can actually grab them and show you. That is pretty wild. That pattern right in the middle. It's uh, the snake is kind of kind of running away from me a little bit. <laughs> but if you can take a look at the pattern. That is really quite different and look at the head on this guy take a look at his head <laughs> boy he is he is really skinny he's, he's been really fastened for a long time but it's, it's funny you start feeding them and they get their weight on really really quick and it's it's really weird how he looks in the the uv compared to the visible that is really wild all right, so take a look at this one. This is actually my bamboo lesser ball python. It's it's a blue-eyed leucistic. It's kind of interesting. It looks like a completely white snake with just a slight yellow line right down the top of the snake. And the interesting thing is this is you can actually see a little bit more pattern on the old light. You can see a little bit coming out right there. This is the 395 to 400 nanometer light here. And then let's switch over to the 365 nanometer light and take a look at the difference. This one is so dramatic and so obvious between the two different wavelengths. It is pretty amazing. This is really the light you need for, for something like this. You can definitely tell there's, it almost looks like a gray line right down the back with a, like a yellow line on top of that, which is really interesting. It is a really interesting snake under the 365 nanometers. And this particular snake, I know for sure, there's no other genes in there except a lesser and a bamboo. I actually have a lesser that I bred to Bobby and there's really nothing else that can be in there. So if you're looking at just the lesser bamboo, that is the pattern that you are gonna see. All right, so this one is up next. This is actually my Coral Glow, 100% head pied. And I actually looked at this one under the 365, and it looks pretty incredible. As a matter of fact, I only saw this before today with the 395 to 400. So let's turn off the visible, and we'll go to 395 to 400 nanometers. This is the black light spectrum here, and I would say it's not very impressive with this, this is definitely, on <laughs> some certain thing, the more I look at these snakes with this light, this is definitely the wrong light. So let's take a look at it with this light. This is pretty incredible. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually like a fluorescent green color. It's really interesting how it just kind of pops. I definitely need... I definitely need a stronger flashlight for this guy. It's definitely not strong enough, but it's really interesting. Let's see if I can zoom up a little bit and give you a better picture of the intensity of the green in this is really interesting. It's it's almost like it's almost like a mossy green with a little orange underneath, which you really don't see without the black light. It is really interesting. The kind of the green color throughout the snake. Very interesting. All right, so this one is my pastel desert ghost male, and I thought it was worthy of mention. I was actually just going through my collection with this little pen light, kind of looking at the different snakes, and this one's pretty interesting. This is visible light, and let me change over to the, this is the 395 to 400 nanometer black light. Not very impressive. <laughs> Come over and take a look at the same under the 365 nanometer. It is pretty impressive. It's, it's got these really orange highlights. And look at the head on that thing. That is crazy. And I definitely would like, I could definitely tell my battery's kind of running down. I think this, the dimming kind of activated on this pen light. I really need a big floodlight at 365 to really see these a little bit better. If I get back a little bit, you can definitely tell it kind of fades out, but it is pretty impressive looking at these different snakes under this new black light. 
All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Sealed Stitch asks, have I been to any reptile shows in Michigan? And that is a very good question. Actually, I haven't been to any shows in that state. The only reptile shows that I've been to to actually sell snakes have been here in Colorado. I've been to the, the Denver Repticons, pretty much the number one show. I'm actually just doing one show this fall, and that is the Denver Repticon. And then I've also been to Reptilian Nation and the Colorado Exotic Pet Expo, the COEPE. I've been to all three shows selling snakes, but I haven't really been to any shows out of state other than just visiting. I've actually visited one show in California, and of course I've been to the NARBC in Tinley Park, and let me tell you, if you haven't been to the NARBC, that is like the Super Bowl of reptile shows. It is like nothing you've ever seen. As a matter of fact, last time I was there, I got jammed in this aisle so tight I couldn't even move for a couple minutes there are so many people it's pretty incredible if you actually go there they have pretty much that is where all kind of the big names go and you'll probably find the best selection of reptiles at that show so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you next time